are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord.
The Gospel from Peter, second verse. Peter wrote this to the exiles from Jerusalem that were driven out about 30 years after Jesus was crucified. Peter says, it is a credit to you if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ has also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed or you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord.
the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I of the Father, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As a parent, children mourned when it ended. I was no longer physically able to kill my children. Wait. I realized my parenting technique was going to need a dramatic change. I was going to have to give up some control and figure out how to help both of us verbally work through what was going on in the moment. Now, of course, that's probably the way I should have been parenting from the beginning, but sometimes a good swoop sure does feel good and gave me the illusion of control in parenthood. When I see images of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, that biblical image that we are celebrating today, I find a similar sense of disappointment. If Jesus is the good shepherd, I am metaphorically that helpless, probably not too bright, albeit cuddly sheep, draped over Jesus' shoulders, as we often see in images. That kind of image has always made me feel a little disempowered. But this week, I stumbled on a Byzantine icon of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, which shifted things for me. Instead of a sheep draped over Jesus' shoulders, the icon has a person draped over Jesus' shoulders. Their eyes are closed, their body is limp, but Jesus, complete with the nail scars on his hands and on his feet, seems to effortlessly be carrying this person out of the wilderness. Now, the image didn't really necessarily make me feel empowered, but the image did humanize that metaphor for me. I could easily imagine an adult who has been walking through that valley of the shadow of death, exhausted from suffering or grief. Or I could imagine that protective Jesus who has swooped someone out of harm's way. And I can definitely imagine an adult who has worn themselves out through their own adult-sized tantrums. In John's Gospel today, Jesus is shepherding the crowd through all those scenarios. 
You may remember, but back in Lent, we got that long story from John's gospel about the blind man that Jesus heals, only to have the religious community freak out about Jesus healing on a Sabbath and not believing that the man had been blind in the first place, even though they had known him his whole life. Well, after the blind man proclaims his desire to follow Jesus, Jesus then turns back to the community of faith and offers the explanation of his healing of the blind man through the text we heard today. His teaching in John is actually a lot longer than what we heard today. In fact, chapter 10 of John's gospel is usually divided into three sections, all about the good shepherd, but a different section is appointed for each of the liturgical years. So in year A, which is the year that we are in, we get the I am the gate or the door, that portion of chapter 10. We're told that when we pass through the gate, the good shepherd tends us so that we will have life and have life abundantly. This passage is the so what of Easter. If you remember, since Easter, people have been running around, they've been demanding proof of Jesus' resurrection, they've been taking whole walks with Jesus without realizing they were talking to the resurrected Jesus. And so Eastertide is this celebration of the resurrection, and we spend all these seven weeks trying to figure out what resurrection means for us. The so what of resurrection today, then, is that Jesus came, died, and rose again so that we might have life and have that life abundantly. And if that abundant life means that Jesus has to carry us out of trouble, hold us when we can't walk on our own, or haul us over his shoulder when we are just too stubborn to accept his gift of abundant life. That is what Jesus, the good shepherd, will do. Jesus' resurrection matters because his resurrection reminds us of the gift of abundant life. But that story is only one part of our so what today. The rest of the so what of resurrection happens in our lesson from Acts today. Since Easter, we have been reading in Acts about the beginnings of the church community. We've heard two parts of Peter's sermon that he preached right after that big Pentecost event, where he gathers the first mega church of over 3,000 people. Now we hear the so what of Jesus being the gate. You see, when Jesus becomes the gate, the door through which we pass into the protected sheepfold, you know what the gathering of the sheep looks like? We're not disempowered, limp bodies lying under protection. When we pass through Jesus' resurrection, we join a community, a community of action. The text from Acts says, of that growing body, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. As the community grows, we're told that they share in economic justice, sharing their wealth and caring for all equally. They spend time together eating with glad, generous hearts, praising God, and tending to the goodwill of all. Jesus doesn't just carry our limp, weary selves and then deposit us out into the world to try again. Jesus brings us into a fold, a community of study, fellowship, communion, and prayer. That is the beginning of your so what of Easter today. We are an Easter people because Jesus gave his life so that we might have life and have life abundantly. 
As Easter people, we are gifted that abundant life so that we can enter that sheepfold of faithful community. Your invitation today is to hop off Jesus' shoulders and walk through that gate of Jesus and come into a community of faith where we will study God's word, develop meaningful relationships, come together around the common table and pray. When we gather in that kind of community, when we are fed mentally, physically, spiritually, then we are fueled for the rest of the so what of Easter. Once nurtured in that generous, abundant community, we are led back through that gate that is Jesus, better able to love and serve the Lord out in the world. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, we celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our hearts are full of joy, knowing you always protect us as the shepherd watches over his sheep. We pray for all members of the Universal Church, including each of us in this parish, to heed the words of Peter to be humble, to know you care for us, to be alert and to be disciplined as we work to make the world a better place. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, and Jennifer, Charles, Jim, and Bob, our clergy. We are yours. Just as the apostles work together by praying, breaking bread, praising God, and helping others, we pray for all members of the world to learn from their example the way to make the world a better place. Please grant our leaders strength, courage, and wisdom to provide the leadership needed by our nation. Be with President Biden, Governor Youngkin, and the legislature and judiciary as they lead. We are yours. Thank you for the many opportunities we give of ourselves for community needs, especially through Salvation Army. 
You gave us the best gift possible, the Holy Spirit, so that we can be one with you as we strive to do your work on us, on earth. We are yours. As the angel protected and saved us at Passover, Jesus served to protect us through his crucifixion and resurrection. May our friends who suffer in any way know that they have your presence to give them comfort and peace. We pray for Carter, Heather, Frank, Lisa, Mike, Jean, Craig, Cindy, Sue, Scott, George, Cheryl, Dale, Shirley, Grayson, Chris, Brandon, Pete, Esther, Ray, Ann, Curtis, Jody, Connie, Buddy, Penny, Dennis, Ellen, Marjean, Ron, and John. For the men and women serving in the armed forces, especially Zachary, Jenny, Tim, Max, and Owen, despite difficult times, you are always there to give us hope. We are yours. The resurrection assures us that our friends who have gone before us are safe and secure with you. Thank you as we remember their contributions while among us, especially Fred Beal, Ray Wyndham, and Brad Yakum. We are yours. Establish the new covenant of reconciliation. Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may, by your grace, show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to Hickory Neck. We are so glad you have joined us today. Uh, just a couple of quick notes. I think um, the car is still here for donating any canned goods or box items you had for fish, so you can drop those off today. Also today, while we are worshiping here, the last several days we've had three parishioners who have been at Camp Chanko making their curcio. So we're holding them in our prayers today and also the three parishioners who are on staff for that weekend. They will be concluding their weekend this evening. Our discovery class continues. Please let us know if you're interested in that. And then next week we have both our women's brunch after this service uh, and our Bible study at the nine o'clock hour resume. So please look in your epistle for all of those updates. You'll also see in there the ability to sign up for our upcoming parish retreat uh, the weekend of the 19th and 20th. I hope you will join us. Uh, there is some paperwork you need to do if you're planning to come, so make sure you uh, make note of that. Uh, this week, we also um, welcomed our new parish uh, administrative assistant, Amy Knowles, so please keep an eye out for her and make sure to greet her. She is in the office Monday through Friday from 10 until 12. A uh, quick note, uh, several of you have let me know, and I so appreciate it, but uh, please know that our fishers and scammers are busy at work sending you what look like emails from me. They are not from me, um, but they usually say something like, can we talk, or hey, I have some need, or somebody needs something, can you please reach out to me? Um, please know that if I needed that kind of help, uh, I, would co I would contact you in a very different way. So know that those are not from me. Um, there are some tips, usually the language that is used. Also always check the email. It's usually some iteration of my email, but not my email. Um, and so know that, but do always let us know. We just like to keep tabs on that. Um, but I know they have been quite busy the last couple of weeks. So just as a heads up about that. 
Um, quick note about communion. As you're coming forward, there are several ways to receive. We do have our traditional wafers. We have them regular and gluten-free. If you need a gluten-free wafer, let us know. We are drinking from the cup at this time. We're not in tinting. If you prefer instead to receive a container, we have sealed containers that have the bread and the wine. Just let us know you need a container. We're happy to give that to you. Or if you just want to come forward for a blessing, simply cross your arms over your chest and we're happy to do that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy you send your Holy Spirit that your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Savior, 
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are to be members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.